Hi, and welcome back to The Hatch. I'm Rosie Murphy. And I'm Sammy Roth. This is the podcast where we talk about Lost. This week we are watching Season 1, Episode 20, The Greater Good, Saeed Episode. Uh, I can't believe we're already up to Episode 20. This is going by so fast. Um, I know, got, and uh, so much more to go. Yeah, we, we've got more with Leonard Dick this episode. He is a uh, was a writer on the first couple seasons of the show. He wrote this episode, um, really had a rich conversation with him about uh, everything going on with, with Saeed and his backstory here, so uh, stick around and listen for that. Let's get started. As always, we start the episode off with our hot takes, having just watched the show. Sammy, what is your hot take? So... My hot take is about um, Saeed's speech about Boone at his funeral. Hmm, um, okay. And so first of all, like, just good for Saeed for stepping in there. I, you know, I mm-hmm. really appreciate it. He realized no one else was going to do that. Shannon wasn't going to do it. So he, you know, he didn't know Boone very well. He admits that, but he, he does the best he can. He remembers that Boone was the first one to jump out and, and try to save Joanna when she was drowning back at the beginning of the season. So I... I respected that from Saeed. However, it's still kind of sad because when you think about it, when Boone went to save Joanna, the whole thing with that was that Boone failed, and Jack actually had to go save Boone. Um, And so it's just, uh, at the end of the day, the best thing that anyone who's talking at Boone's funeral has to say about him is that he tried and failed to save someone who was drowning. Um, Well, I I think to be more generous to Boone, to Boone, I think Saeed's point there is that Boone jumped into action and he was motivated by this sort of deep-seated sense of justice and goodness and it didn't matter so much that he failed. It, it mattered that he was willing to try and, and no one else was, right? Like yeah, he was no, the first person to go out there. You're, you're right. And I, I don't want to be un, unfair or uncharitable to Boone. It was great that he did that. It just, it seemed, a, I guess what I mean is that it seemed a little bit sad to me that you know, that's the the one story that's getting told about him at his, his funeral. Well, anyway. Um, yeah. Yes, my hot take. On a related point, um, this is the most I have ever liked or maybe maybe sympathized with, is the better term, uh, with Shannon. Hmm. Um, I think her reactions during this episode are feel very real and very relatable to me. Um, which is not typically the case with Shannon's character, uh, as you and the listeners probably know. Um, I, yeah, no, I thought everything she did, I mean, despite being kind of rash, you know, stealing the key and stealing the gun and going out into the jungle in the rain to kill John Locke, um, was rash and arguably irresponsible, but at least it was something. Um, we haven't seen much agency on Shannon's part, and that's one of the things that really frustrates me about watching her character. Um, and I thought that that showed a kind of personal growth, like twisted though it might be, um, that she was willing to, willing and able to take that kind of bold action. Hmm. Yeah, I, um, I agree with that. As always, this is our open forum, so if anybody else has some thoughts on what Shannon did and why she did it, please give us a call. Our phone number is 9546-DHARMA, and our inbox is always open. I was curious, just thinking about what we were talking about before with Shannon and Revenge, do you, I guess I'm curious, like, what you think about how much Locke should or shouldn't be be blamed here, because we've got Shannon and Jack both, like, really, really mad at, at Locke. Do you think it's justified, or do you think they should uh, sort of lay off, like Saeed decides to do in the end? So I think... Locke does deserve some of the blame for his obfuscation. Um, he does lie to Jack. That does inform Jack's medical treatment. I think I think Jack's anger is valid um, because it's it's in part based on, you know, I based my medical treatment on this and then it was wrong and Boone died. Um, but also because Jack sees himself and indeed is in large part the leader of this group and thinks he's owed the truth, um, which I think is a fair way to feel. Um, Shannon, I think, blames John because he tells her to. Like, he comes up to Shannon and he says, I know how confused and angry you must be right now. I hope you can forgive me. I'm 
I'm sorry. He gives her somebody to blame, right? He walks up to her and says, blame me. Um, and the fact that she does, I think, is is reasonable. Um, because she wasn't there, she has no idea what happened. Um, except for some of what Saeed said and some of what John said. Yeah. So what else do you want to talk about? Well, Saeed. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> um, we are going to get into a lot of this with Leonard Dick, who described himself at one point as the vice president of Saeed. Oh, um, I'd forgotten that. That was the best. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a title I would, you know, like to claim for myself, but Leonard certainly has more right to claim it. Having I would, I would like to be the president of Saeed, of actually. <laughs> <laughs> um, but... I think there are a couple cursory points we should hit on here. Um, what stands out to you about Saeed here? Um, well, I just found myself like respecting so much how he handles the situation with Locke and Shannon. Um, yeah. I mean, God, he has this, you know, like sort of new relationship with Shannon, and obviously, you know, I'm sure there's a big part of him that just wants to do what she wants and sort of to, you know, please her here and help her get through this. But, you know, despite that, he he's just so sort of logical and thinking this through and he goes and he evaluates Locke and he determines like okay I really don't think Locke actually tried to kill Boone here and you know even though Locke is lying to him about other things and being super suspicious like he's able to make that judgment call and like he Mm -hmm. says at the end he determines Locke you know I really think he's maybe our best hope of surviving here um and you know and he goes to Shannon and he says you know I'm sorry I can't give you what you want and and not only that he then saves Locke's life and tackles Shannon. And, you know, he certainly didn't have to do any of that for Locke. He was not beholden to Locke. Um, Locke actually tells him in this episode, I knocked you unconscious and stopped you from triangulating a signal. Right. Um, So he has every, you know, every reason, you know, personally and emotionally to, you know, either do something bad to Locke here or just let Shannon shoot him. And he, and he, he doesn't. And I really respect that. He's a real upstanding human being agree with that and the thing that I most took away from the flashback is that Saeed really tries to thread the needle here and not mm. hurt anyone um like he he tries to get what he wants and also to thwart this terrorist attack and also to save his friend right like he he tries to convince his friend to he says stop the truck I'm working with the CIA I'll give you a 10 minute head start run um in which case he could have accomplished all three of his goals you know, his friend decides to to kill himself and, and doesn't take that offer. But Saeed is, I think, motivated by the same desire to do no harm that Jack is, but, like, is able to be much more calculating about it and really able to thread these needles that are, like, very socially fraught and very confusing. Uh, and I don't think a man of sort of lesser character would be able to do. You're you're totally right, and I one thing I really like about that point is that actually in this episode I think you see that contrast with Jack, where yeah everyone is telling Jack like you've got to calm down, you've got to get some rest. You're the leader, you're the doctor. Everyone needs you right now, and all Jack can you know can think about in his own head is I'm so mad at Locke, I need to get revenge on him, and it like consumes him, which is totally the opposite of the like you know like you said the sort of logical approach that Saeed takes, where he's trying to actually figure out what is the best way to accomplish all of these different goals that I need to accomplish and, and do the best for everyone. Yeah. Say it is so good. I know, I know. I, my biggest takeaway from every Saeed episode is like, wow, Saeed and Locke have such interesting chemistry and such a cool dynamic. Right? Wouldn't it have been fun? <laughs> Wouldn't it have been fun if, <laughs> if they were the two um, two leaders, but they're not, they're not diametrically opposed, right? They are able to work together. So that wouldn't have quite had the same outcome. I know, but right. That that scene where they're walking through the jungle, interrogating each other. It's so good. You're right to say interrogating each other because it is, you know, it is one-sided for a while until Locke says, are you interrogating me, Saeed? Why would I interrogate you, John? (sighs) Jack called me a liar. In front of every man, woman, and child I've come to know over the past month. And maybe there's a part of you that thinks maybe there isn't a plane out here at all. I know when I'm being lied to. There's a plane. And then it becomes this back and forth 
Um, and note about that, Locke still lies about the hatch. Yeah. He doesn't tell Saeed, um, despite being asked point blank. And do you think Saeed knows he's lying? Well, yeah, he definitely does, because at the end of the episode, he goes up to Locke and says, and now you're going to stop lying and you're going to take me to the hatch. Oh, of course. Um, I kind of think we should just hear from Leonard Dick, who is going to get into so much of this. I, I think so, too. It was it was a really fun conversation with him, but the most fun part of it was the part where we talked about Saeed, so let's, uh, let's definitely get into that. Let's do it. So, I uh, want to talk about the greater good? Absolutely. So you, you told me that you were the was it the vice president of yeah Saeed I was the, I, I I I just <laughs> really took to Saeed I love the character uh, you know I love the actor and um, what had happened was we uh, we w- had broken uh, for the um, for the Christmas holidays and I was next up in the rotation um, and we were, I knew we were going to do the Saeed episode and then I just spontaneously uh, came up with a, a germ of an idea because I realized we had never learned how Saeed ended up uh, in Australia and mm-hmm. how he ended up on that flight. So that was that was a starting point. And then I, I, I just thought about the idea and I, um, and I presented my thoughts to Carlton Damon and that's what, and, and we ran with, with a version of that. And again, t- taking, um, taking a, a starting point of um, how someone ends up in the island and, 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 and weaving this really interesting story and the character and you know and, and then they added the, you know the, there was that very nice touch at the end of the episode where uh, after Assam his friend um, dies and Saeed insists on staying an extra day to bury his friend which was a really cool it, that was a, a real lost moment you know you think he's about to get on the plane he says no you know, change my flight to tomorrow so so that he could bury his friend. That that you know, so that that's you get you get a great character moment. You learn about Saeed and his loyalty. You learn about how tortured he is by what just transpired, and you get a really cool uh, moment in the in the arc of the yeah. show, which you know the fans would eat up and say, "Oh my god!" <laughs> I know I, I had totally forgotten about that moment and, until it it happened when rewatching it. And just you know. Blew my mind yeah. immediately. <laughs> what um, I mean, the flashback in this episode is is so intense. Um, you know, with with Saeed having to uh, sort of push this terrorist plot to the the point of consummation in order to to find Nadia and to to get these you know these these explosives captured. I'm I'm really curious what your thinking was with that story. Sort of, I mean, this was just a couple of years after nine eleven. It's it's very laden with you know sort of potential political explosivity, and and so I'm interested in. What, if anything, you know, were you trying to say with this with this flashback, or was it really just about Saeed's story? It, I would say it was about Saeed's story. It was you know, the, the show worked very hard to be, uh, you know, sensitive to uh, the political landscape, and you know, at the time, uh, so it was, it was, that was two thousand four, two thousand five. Yeah. So the uh, this was the middle of the, of the Iraq War, and so and you're right, and, and it was after nine eleven. Um, so certainly there was that kind of sensitivity, but it was really a Saeed story. What mm-hmm. does Saeed want? Saeed um, wanted to find Nadia, and you, it's a great character question of how far could you push this character to uh, find this woman that he loves? And mm-hmm. you push him into the most extreme situation, and that's why there's that wonderful moment when Esam says to him, um, will you do this with me? And Saeed doesn't even blink. He says mm-hmm. yes. And of course, uh, you know, Saeed at the, you know, at the end um, tells us um, what's actually happening and tries to save his friend. So you get this great character study. I mean, it's interesting. It was a very highly charged episode with a lot of, with, and the flashback had a lot of plot to it, a lot of moves. Yeah. Um, but it was really, at its heart, a character study. Uh, of what this man wanted, what, how, what the tortured, uh, the, the, the torture, uh, no pun intended, soul that, that he had by virtue of what he had done in the past. And, and he worked so hard to escape this and it just, um, it just came back and w- it would, le- mm-hmm. would not let him out of its grip to the point that he had to ultimately sacrifice a friend, which he didn't want to do. So you get this really emotionally turbocharged study. And, and you know, it's interesting. 
yes, there, 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 it's about terrorist plots. Uh, nominally, it's about terrorist plots and and C four and you know and CIA agents. But at the end, it's about w w what this man would do for a woman he loves, and and what would he do for a friend that he cares about. It's really mm. simple and, and 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 visceral and and fundamental at its most core level. Yeah, and and I I mean the moment where he tries to let uh, you know tells Assam to to run away that he's going to get captured. It's um. I mean, it's amazing because he is in that moment, at least to me, it seems like he's putting at risk the whole hope of finding Nadia, because what if the, you know, CIA and, you know, the government agents show up and, and they, you know, the deal is off, he shouldn't have let him go, he shouldn't have told him anything about it. Because you're right, it's, it's, it's that really, really tough balance he's trying to strike at that moment between yeah. protecting his friend and... And it's great because he, in the moment, he makes what is the right decision, and it's still... Um, it still backfires on him, and it mm. backfires on, on him in, in multiple ways. His friend, his friend realizes he's been betrayed. His friend ends up taking his own life, and then um, uh, Saeed decides, you know, again trying to make another noble, morally right decision to stay behind and bury his friend. And so he ends up on the you know, ends up on the island and doesn't see Nadia. So at every turn, you have Saeed trying to make the right decision. Mm. And when he does at the end make the right decisions, it comes and bites him in the butt in the worst possible way. And of course, having Naveen deliver these scenes is it really, uh, Naveen Andrews to me could read the back of a cereal box and make it, com <laughs> make it compelling. That's how, how good an actor he is. So, you know, I actually want to talk a little more about that, but I'll skip ahead because if you're complimenting Naveen Andrews, one of the things we've we've talked about a lot on this podcast is that we... You know, we think he would have, Saeed would have made a really interesting foil to Locke if Jack had not been the lead of the show. Um, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we, I mean, we love Naveen and just think that Saeed is, is one of the, you know, the, the more compelling and dynamic and, and also just a really strong presence who never falls neatly into Jack's camp or to Locke's camp. Um, yeah, and, and it, but your observation is an interesting one yeah, because yeah. Jack and Locke, their differences were rooted in their worldviews. Uh, yeah. You know the the man of faith, the man of science. You know at, at its at its most headline form. But what was re and what was really fun about this episode in the scenes between uh, Locke and Saeed was you you get a different kind of dynamic because Saeed really is a is a is a man of pragmatism here, and he's almost you know he he has the difficulty of balancing um, you know Shannon's loss and the pain that's created. With knowing that you know, Locke might be the one chance, the real chance they have to have to survive, and it's interesting to see how pragmatism kind of trumps love uh, in those moments. And mm -hmm. you know, he he has the opportunity. Uh, you know, a, a hotter head would have would have taken Locke out, but Saeed is smart enough to realize to recognize uh, what Locke represents, and so I think that speaks to the, to Saeed's mm -hmm. smart. So. He's loyal. He, you know, he certainly, you know, cares for Shannon. But you know, as the title, hence the title, the greater good. He, he knows that the the greater good is to keep Locke alive. Again, another decision that mm. a, a a morally difficult decision, but one in the end, he knows is the right for the greater good. Well, I think that's, I think that's really. I mean, you, you, that's that's a really good point because with with Jack and with Locke, I think two of the things that you know a flaw that they each have that really makes them problematic as a leader is they're they're both so stubborn in their own way. Jack is, you know, has his his concept of what you know is right and what he should be doing, and he sort of lets his, um, you know, he just sort of frequently lets his his anger and his moral righteousness get in the way of what's really the smart action. And Locke, with his blind allegiance to the the island, Saeed, you're right. He's very he's very pragmatic. He's very practical. He's willing to sort of subjugate his, you know, whatever urges or inflamed passions that he has to to do the smart thing. And that's not something that Jack or Locke is especially good at. I would say that's right. And the and the other cool thing, and again, it it speaks to Naveen's performance, is when you are able to suppress that, it creates a a fire down below. And so mm. you know that these decisions, when he confronts Locke and says you're our best chance, moments like that, you know that it's eating at him on the inside because yeah. he'd rather, you know, he, he would rather put one in Locke's head. 
<laughs> and so that you know that gives again that gives you a, a character with texture and and some you're watching him with some intrigue and you're wondering down the road will he will that part of Saeed surface and will we see uh, Saeed you know, try to do something to lock um, yeah yeah and this this is why I I turned out to be a, a bit of a fanboy from day one with Saeed I just thought he was so cool and so interesting. Um, He's great. Yeah, it's a, don't, don't, I don't think Naveen knows this. <laughs> that, that I was, uh, I was like the on the staff. Uh, I, I was like the big Saeed fanboy. I, I will do everything I can to get this podcast in front of him. <laughs> um, but I, you know, fire inside. You're right. You, you're right. You always sense that with Saeed that that fire that's just sort of waiting to get out, and it's it's he's so much fun to watch. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, and and I just I do love also that after he says you may be our best chance of surviving, he immediately then calls bullshit on Locke and says, now you're going to show me where the hatch is. Like, he's not taking anything from... And that's what makes those anyone. kinds of encounters... They, a, any of the encounters with these characters, you know, they... they it, it, it's, you know, it, it it's like, I know that you know that I know that you know, and, and nobody mm-hmm. tries to backpedal. Nobody... Everybody honors the other character. And we there, there were moments like that all through the run of the show, and certainly in the seasons I was there, where, you know, they, they, Saeed busts Locke, and what would most what would most people do? They would, you know, they would try to lie their way out of it, and, and Locke doesn't. He honors, mm. he honors his adversary by honoring his adversary, and that makes the adversary honor him more, and that's where you get this really cool, complex, it, it, it's like a three-dimensional chess game, where mm. somebody takes your pawn, and you say, yep, you took my pawn. And then you counter, but everything is out in the open. And that's what makes it so interesting is when everything is out, out of the open, you're looking for the layers beneath it. And you know, when you have actors like this, it just makes it all the more delicious. Yeah, so um, you know, knowing that you're such a big fan of Saeed, I, I am super interested in what you thought about Saeed and Shannon and, and their romance. And, and to preface that, uh, you know, we've talked about this on the podcast uh, we interviewed a, a couple of weeks ago Andrea Gabriel, who plays Nadia, and and asked her what she thought of Saeed and Shannon ending up together at the the church at the end, and she said that she was disappointed and <laughs> a little bit frustrated for her character, which, you know, I I understand, and I think that that you know Rosie and I, that you know, my co-host uh, on, on the podcast, you know, we both kind of preferred Saeed and Nadia to Saeed and Shannon, so I'm I'm interested in in what your your take is on that. Uh, I liked it because you know. It's a relationship that you don't expect at the beginning of the run, right? Shannon is this spoiled, entitled young woman. Saeed is a tortured soul from a from a uh, with, with a with a history of violence from a completely different culture, and so you you start off with these two unlikely people developing a genuine relationship, and it becomes a relationship that the audience roots for. And so I think at some level at the end, when you see them, you know, if you see them together, it feels, it feels organic. Like it feels like these are the people, these are people who, who should be together. Mm-hmm. And so I, maybe I'm biased. Maybe it's because um, that relationship evolved while I was there and I was able to contribute to it. I, I, I do like, you know, I, I do like where, uh, where it goes. I mean, it's interesting that um, you got, you got an actor's perspective and you're getting a, now you're getting a writer's perspective. <laughs> And yeah. and so I, I think that's actually very interesting in, in seeing that again it goes to how a a beloved TV show is viewed and everybody has an opinion. Yeah. You know it's a you know it's it's uh, I remember a writer I worked with said you know some con- we were I was on a show we made a controversial decision and it caused an uproar and his point was. The good news is it's caused an uproar. <laughs> people care. People are debating, right? That means people right. are tuning in. And yeah. so the fact that people are so invested and that to the point that they have you know, heated differences of opinion means that they care about the show and they're watching your show. And so that is, a, that is the greatest compliment that, that you could ask for. I, I, yeah. I'm, in some ways, it's great that it caused, <laughs> it caused a controversy. <laughs> and and I, should, I should clarify, Andrea Gabriel was not, not personally bitter about this. She oh, I'm sure. She was very yeah. grateful for her time on the show. Yeah. No, it's, just, a, it's, um, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting intellectual <laughs> argument. It is. And, and I guess I just felt watching this episode where, I mean, as we were talking about, where this flashback, Saeed is willing to go to, you know, all sorts of lengths to get back to Nadia and, and do things that he's terribly uncomfortable with. And... And I guess maybe part of the issue for for me, at least with with the Shannon romance, is um, you know ultimately there's just 
I don't know that there's an, enough time in the end for Shannon to to fully transform as a character since she, uh, you know, gets killed off halfway through the second season. I, I, I guess I, I I wonder if I would have been more more convinced or more compelled if she had had sort of a you know a a fuller transformation from who she is at the beginning to who she might have been if she had made it to the end of the show. But at the same time, I think that's what makes it so heartbreaking, which is this character is on a journey and the mm. journey is interrupted. And certainly that is what, uh, it, 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 there, there, are sort of, there are two parts of it. You have the, the Shannon of it and you have the Saeed of it. So on the Shannon of it, mm. you have, it's a, it's a journey that she was on that's incomplete. And then Saeed has, a, has found somebody, maybe someone to fill the void that, that Nadia has, um, has been unable to fill. Um, or is, is not in a position to fill, and now Saeed has lost a second mm. person. And so that adds a whole other layer to, uh, to Saeed and makes him richer and makes him more complex. Mm. Well, that's, that's a good point. I'll, I'll have to tell you if, if when we get to the middle of the second season, if I, if I feel better about Shannon and Saeed, okay. I'll, I'll let you know. Right. I'm sure um, it'll change 10 times between now and then. Oh, <laughs> gosh, probably. La- last question about the greater good. This is totally random, but the whole thing where Sawyer's voice soothes Aaron and stops him from crying, yes. that is, that's hilarious and yes. so weird. And where did that even come from? That, I'm, I'm going to make a confession, that actually came from... Um, my own experience, um, my wife was taking a graduate school exam, very rigorous exams, and I just started, I said, you know what, I'm going to just read to you. So I just, we, I had a book and I just read to her and it just, <laughs> and so when it came time, because I, 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 I revealed, I mean, the, the great thing about a good writer's room is you, you inject personal stories and even the things mm. that are most, more, most vulnerable. And so that came 100% from my own experience, and of course, seeing Sawyer um, become the voice that calms the baby is just drop dead funny. It's great, but it, but it also, but it's also a, a, a again. This is a, a, another testament to to the show and what made her. The fact that Charlie is doing this for Claire. I mean, so on on the surface, it plays comedically, but it really is a wonderful. As much as it as much as it, as it is Sawyer's voice calms the baby, it's really about what Charlie is doing for Claire. And and um, uh, that that he's developing a relationship and taking care of this baby and mm. wrangling Sawyer and forcing Sawyer to continue continue reading and so again it speaks to the, the complexity and and all the the the, the different levels uh, that made the show so rich. It does, and and I that's amazing. You were able to translate your personal experience into life on the deserted island. Yes, better the, that than the Saeed story. You know, you know. What's happening. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you, don't tell me about your CIA experience, or, or someone will come and. Uh, will I would get be me. a terrible spy. I, you know, I, I would. I, I have. I have the opposite of a poker face. I would, <laughs> I'd be out quickly. So, Leonard, what are you working on now? So I just finished a six-year run on The Good Wife, um, which was also a wonderful experience. Thank you. And so now I am, uh, the last two seasons, I've been developing pilots. So I actually have a new pilot uh, that I'm working on that we just sold to ABC, uh, the old home of Lost. Uh, very, it's a fam- big, fun family drama and working on that. And then um, I have a couple other projects uh, in the works. Uh, there's one I'm about to take out and there's another one that I wrote for um, for a production company that we're looking to set up a cable. So uh, the headline is I'm work, work in the pilot game, and the pilot game is really a numbers game. As my mother, the sage, would say, you have to shoot the mm. pucks at the net until one of them goes in. <laughs> so I'm winding up at the blue line and uh, taking my shots. The the one that you sold to ABC or that developed for ABC, does that have a, a, a name that you can share that people Sure, can it, it's actually public. The show is called Glass Houses. Um, Kyle Richards, who is one of the Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, is actually an executive producer on the show. Okay. And it's very loosely inspired by um, her life. And um, she, uh, her husband is in the real estate business. The, the, short, the, the short version is it's a big fun family drama about uh, a family in L.A.'s high, high, high end real estate world. Hmm. And uh, it's it's big, it's fun, it's frothy, and uh, we're just at the early stages of it. And so far, it's it's been a lot of fun. So we'll see. Uh, cool. we, we've pitched it. I have to, I'm about to write the script, and then we go into the pool with all the other pilot scripts, and hopefully we'll get far enough that ABC orders a pilot, and then hopefully far enough that they pick it up to series. 
Awesome. I, I hope the numbers game works out uh, in your Thank favor you. sooner rather than later. From your mouth to the uh, to Ben Sherwood and Channing Dungeon's ear. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll laugh like I know who those people are, ABC executives, <laughs> I assume. Exactly. Um, Leonard, th- thanks very much for talking to us. We really appreciate Great. it. My pleasure. Well, as always, that was great. Um, the story about Sawyer reading to the baby is just so sweet. Um, <laughs> I, I love knowing that that came from a personal place. Um, and also, this is one of my favorite sort of tropes on Lost, which is Sawyer getting the goofy plot line, um, yeah. which <laughs> I'm so glad happens so many times. Um, as yeah, far it was, as... It was sweet. I, I was... I was just going to say I was kind of hoping when I asked him the question about where that came from that it would be a personal story. So I was I was very satisfied that it was. Yeah, that was that was awesome. Um, as far as things about Saeed, um, I'm I'm glad you asked Leonard about this being just a couple years after 9/11, and we have this plot line that involves the CIA and and terrorism and um, how they had to sort of navigate the politics of the time. Uh, and I, I like Leonard's answer, of course, that this is really just a story about Saeed and they were trying to build this fully formed character, um, not totally in a vacuum, but not in explicit response to the politics of the time. But I think this, I'm thinking about a similar conversation that we had with David Fury earlier this season, where he said, um, you know, one of one of the most sort of radical things Lost did was in 2004 prominently feature this character who was from Iraq and who had a history of military service under a Muslim government oh, yeah. uh, and yeah. and turn him into a protagonist and really this like complex and fully formed character who, who again wasn't like an explicit response to the politics of the time like the point of Saeed is not to be political the point of Saeed is to be a great character but like you can't separate that totally from the context in which he's written um, so I think it's really neat to watch this 13 years 14 years later um and think about it in hindsight in that way well you're right and i think it's it speaks to what leonard said how well this holds up as a story 13 14 years later like it doesn't really matter that we're not still in that same sort of crazy post 9 11 frame of mind like this is still just a great Said story and it's still very painful to watch and you know how the you know how he's how he's handled and how he's treated by these government agents and the moral decisions he has to make to respond to that like it it's powerful yeah yeah there was one other thing that Leonard said do you mind if I just go back to our discussion from earlier a little bit cuz something he said um Shoot. about no that's the point Saeed making the decision to to keep Locke alive yeah he just the way he put it which I liked a lot was that Saeed has decided that the greater good is to keep Locke alive here uh-huh. um which of course speaks to the episode title but I thought that's it. It's interesting because Locke basically like sort of admits to Saeed in the middle of this episode that getting off the island is not what he's focused on. Hmm. Um, he he says to Locke a couple of times, although Saeed Locke says to Saeed a couple of times, although Saeed doesn't really pick up the thread. He says, "You know, I had to knock you out back then because you were all missing the bigger picture. You were so focused on getting off the island." Um, yeah. And he says it a second time and. So it just it's it's interesting because it it seems to me that Saeed does have kind of an acceptance here of yeah they're on this island and they're going to be stuck on it and if they're going to survive there that that that's what Locke is their best bet for not for surviving in terms of getting off the island but surviving for all of the time that they have to stay on the island so it's you know it's it, I think when I was talking to Leonard one of us said that Saeed doesn't always fall neatly into Jack or to Locke's camp right but. But this seems like a circumstance where he's, you know, come around to Locke's way of, of thinking here that they've got to learn to survive in this place because nobody's coming. Right. And, I mean, Saeed is obviously team Raft. Um, I mean, he does a lot of things to try to make the Raft successful. He does want to get off the island. But he's sure. he's more willing, I think, than Jack to accept that that might not be for a while, or that might, you know, that the, the raft might not work, um, and they may have to try some other things, um, which, which again, just speaks to his resourcefulness and his, I think, experience as a soldier and, you know, experience adapting to lots of different lives. Yeah. And, and a, 
another thing that occurred to me um, just listening again to the interview is all of the stuff that we've been praising Saeed for and how well he's handling this whole situation. Like, we didn't realize it until this episode and this flashback, but, like, he's doing all that having just suffered through the trauma not only of having been in a plane crash, but, like, having betrayed his good friend who killed himself and losing the opportunity to reconnect with the love of his life. That's true. Like, not not only still, was this... Still. Yeah, this flashback was, like, the weeks before the plane crash. This was only a matter of yeah. a couple of months ago. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, like, Saeed... Damn impressive. Saeed was on his way to find Nadia when they landed on the island. Yep. Which is a... In the same way that Claire was on the way to give up her baby, right? Like, that's an immediate kind of loss, which he's still coping with, like, very much in the present when we meet him. Um, and yet you would never know it from watching him. No. Anyway, that's uh, that's going to be it for this week, I think. We're, uh, we'll be back next week. We'll have Born to Run, which is a Kate episode. We'll have an interview with Michael Bovala, who is the uh, director of photography, a.k.a. lead cinematographer on, on the first season of the show, and that'll be fun. That'll be a fun new perspective, uh, getting away from sort of the writers, actors, directors that we've had thus far. Um, in the meantime, as always, we love to connect with you and hear from you. You can call and leave us a hot take, and we'll play it on the show at uh, 9546-DHARMA. Or record a voice memo of yourself and just send it to a me- excuse me send it as a message to our Facebook page, which is facebook.com slash the hash podcast. Yes, our uh, our theme music is by Andy G. Cohen. Our cover art is by Danny Roth, and uh, we'll see you next week. Namaste. Mm-hmm.